Hey guys, welcome to another Final Cut Pro tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about Parallax Pro. This is a really simple yet powerful Final Cut plugin for creators who want to add subtle cinematic 3D depth with ease. All you've got to do is get yourself a background, a transparent PNG foreground, you can also get yourself some optional textures and this is going to create an amazing parallax motion effect with a really natural depth of field effect to it. You can get this incredibly professional effect really easily. Let's show you how. So once you come into Final Cut Pro, you're going to want to make a new project and come up here onto the right hand side and click the six boxes. And this opens your browser. Scroll down to generators and you'll see here full access parallax pro these 11 plugins have different movements zooming in and out or across different parts of the screen you just need to choose whichever is right for your project but the process is going to be the same as we talk about here in this tutorial for the purposes of learning let's just use a simple zoom in parallax 2 so i'm going to click it and press q that drops it straight on the timeline zoom in a little bit before we change anything let's see how this looks straight out of the box So you can see straight out of the box this plugin comes really cinematic. It's going to be perfect for films with loads of breathing room with that real documentary feel. So let's imagine for a second I'm making a documentary about planet Earth. So if we come up here to our published parameters on the right hand side, if you can't see this then you need to click these three slider icons in the top right and that opens your inspector. If we scroll down you can see we have tons of stuff to work with here to make it fully customizable to exactly how we need it for the project. Our first options here are build in and build out. This is whether or not we want our titles to fade in or not. I do, I think it's really cool, really cinematic, so I'm going to leave both of those on. Our first section here then is our first drop zone and this is going to be for our background. So to use this, we're going to click on the drop zone box. I'm gonna come up here to the top left and I'm gonna to go to my libraries. Then I'm gonna find the clip that I want to use. I'm gonna go right to the start of it and I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna come and click apply clip. Immediately, this is going to drop it into my drop zone and this is now our new background. Let's see how that looks with our new background. Okay, amazing, it's looking really cool already. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see we have foreground is our next section. We have a user tip here and this is to use a transparent PNG so that the background is visible behind the foreground. And all this means is you're going to want to get a kind of image that doesn't have background included in it. So you can see here in the foreground I have this blurry kind of mountain thing from our default template. One good way to get a transparent PNG is you, let's say we're looking for a picture of the moon. You come to Google Images and you could type in the moon PNG. And if you type in transparent as well, then you're likely to get something transparent. I'm looking for something a bit high res, so I'm gonna to go to size and click large as well. You might have to hunt around a little bit for one that works for your purposes. One really easy way to import something into your library is to simply drag it onto your timeline and delete it. Then if you go and search for it in your library, you'll see it's right there. So we're going to click on our plugin one more time. I'm gonna come down to the foreground and the drop zone in the foreground section. Click on this and then I'm going to go to the PNG we just found and click apply. You can see straight away that our image is very high res and taken up the whole screen. So immediately I'm going to want to come down to the scales here. We have X scale and Y scale. I'm going to change each of those to 30%. Then I'm going to move the X position and I'm going to move the Y position until we find a place where we want this to sit. And this is a top tip for Final Cut Pro. A lot of sliders max out at a certain number, 500 for example. Often you can drag these. You can find that the actual number goes a lot higher or lower than the one that you're allowed with the slider. So you can just click on that number and you can drag the number up and down and it will go as high or low as you want it to. So hopefully you can see here that we're starting to get this really nice 3D effect where it feels like the moon is in front of the text. I'm going to just put it in front of the H there just to really sell it. If we scroll down a little further we can see we've got foreground colour and this is because a lot of the images you find aren't going to be perfect or with the perfect amount of light that is in your scene. So for this reason we can change things like the opacity, maybe we want to like get a little bit of blue on there just like it's reflecting off the earth. We can change our saturation, I'm going to leave that pretty much where it was. And our brightness, this is a big one. Things are generally too bright if you don't want to draw too much attention to them, so I'm going to bring the brightness down slightly. 
and also contrast. Maybe just a little bit more contrast looks good. If we slide down a little further into our options here, you can see our next section is camera control. And here we can change the depth of field blur amount. That's what DOF stands for, depth of field. And you can see if we bring this down, it's gonna bring everything really into focus and the moon is just perfectly in focus. But that's not very cinematic and we want things to be quite blurry. Not too blurry, so we can't tell what it is, but just blurry enough. The near focus, this is an offset, so this is where we can choose what is in focus and what is out of focus. You see if we go all the way to zero, even our title goes out of focus. The way to imagine this is like you're controlling the focus ring on a lens. That's exactly what near focus is. The same with far focus, this is going to control what's in focus far away from the camera. Um, so this would tend to be your background or even these um, texture elements that we add later on. You can also choose the type of blur you want to have, whether it's a Gaussian blur or a defocus, which is more of a lens type blur. I personally think Gaussian is the better kind of blur to use in this situation. If we come down to the next section, you can see we have add titles, and this is where we add our main title. I'm going to say, welcome to, and then on the other line, earth. And I'm gonna find a font that I like the look of. Okay, so I found a font I like, and you can see our fonts aren't quite working, Welcome to Earth. I love how Earth looks here, but I want Welcome To to be in different font. And I'll show you a secret little trick here, where uh, we can get around this problem that Final Cut Pro won't let you change the font of individual lines within a plugin. What we can do is we can come up here to the top, and we can click the Text Inspector button here. If we then double click on our text box here, you can see that it opens it up and now we can see Welcome to Earth written here. If we then select Welcome To, we can then individually change the parameters of this without affecting what we think looks good already, the Earth text. So I'm looking for a sort of handwriting font here. Okay, that is looking awesome. So if you wanted to change anything individually in here, you can then also come through and you can use all of the different effects and controls within the plugin. One interesting control here we have is the blur control and a top tip here is if you wanted to we can use the keyframe here on the right hand side to keyframe the blur which can kind of give a really cool like lens effect. But I think that's looking really really good how it is right now. If I scroll down right to the bottom you can see we have one final drop zone and this is our texture drop zone. So you see here in our example, we have snow currently. Obviously snow is not gonna be perfect for the situation. If we wanted to just turn this off, we can using the on and off switch. And that looks really cool on its own, but I think we can do a bit better here. I think something like a lens flare could really add to the look of this. Sometimes when you add your texture element, you're gonna find that it just covers everything and it looks terrible. So what you want to do there is you want to come down to blend mode here, and I recommend playing with these, but screen, nine times out of 10, is going to get things looking transparent and really, really cool. You can also change where you want this to be sitting using X pan and Y pan. Let's leave it about there. And I might even just blur it slightly here too. Okay, let's see how that looks. That looks so cool and it was so easy to do just a three step process of just picking out a background, picking out a transparent foreground, and if we really want to, we can find a texture as well. I recommend also if you guys want to turn off the titles, then this can become a really powerful tool just to add interesting elements to your shots to give them a bit more flavor. You can see just by turning off the text, suddenly this like relatively average clip of the earth has some really interesting bits to it. It's got some real depth, some real cinematic elements. If you're wondering where I got this anamorphic lens flare from, it's from Motion Array. They have loads of great and transparent assets on there. I've got a link below which can get you $50 off a yearly plan. I highly recommend checking them out. I also found they had really cool assets, things like birds flying past with no background on them or water effects like rain and snow. These are just things that you can add into your videos to really add a professional finish to it. Anyway, just a short and sweet tutorial today to show you this new pack by FCPX Full Access. This, like all of our packs, is included in the Ultimate Bundle, which is every single product we make for Final Cut Pro for just $99. I highly recommend that you guys check it out for the best value anywhere on the internet. And with that, I will leave you guys to it. Stay creative and we'll see you in the next video.